Hello and welcome back to the channel from India. I am in Bangalore and I'm going to be bringing you up to date on everything that's happened since I left Qatar. This is my third time in the country. Both previous times I visited the north and I'm filming on my new GoPro. Lots to bring you up to date with. And I'm just going to be walking somewhere right now for breakfast and so it feels so good to be back many of you may know that this is probably my favorite country if you can't tell by the way by my voice a little bit i've been under the weather for the last week or so i arrived here in bangalore four days ago now i've spent the last three full days just in my room my hotel back there where i just started the video on that street it's called temple tree very nice little retreat my room has a balcony it is next to this main road i mean just 20 seconds away but it does feel quite quiet on the street there Now from what I've heard, the south of India is much more relaxed than the north. But still here in Bengaluru, which is the new name, Bangalore was the former British name. This is a city of over 10 million people and so it's still quite intense, of course. And I've heard things about its notorious traffic which I think we're experiencing as we walk along towards breakfast here. So Bangalore is one of India's most progressive cities. It is a kind of IT hub, technological hub. The Silicon Valley of India, if you like, although Mumbai and Delhi also have their part to play. I think a lot of locals here will tell you that they still call the city Bangalore and not Bengaluru. It's not me being a neo-colonialist. I should call it Bengaluru from now on, really. It is an extra syllable. So the difference from Bombay to Mumbai and Madras to Chennai is not as easy. It doesn't roll off the tongue as nicely, which is probably why it still gets called Bangalore by the majority of locals. Crossing the road here, even on a zebra crossing, isn't the easiest of challenges. But maybe I can go for it. No, not there. <laughs> okay, now's my chance. So, as I make my way to breakfast, where have I been? I have been in Thailand for just over one week. And I was there meeting somebody, but I didn't make any videos. I flew there from Qatar and I spent some time in Bangkok and then made my way to Kanchanaburi, which is in the west part of Thailand, near the border with Myanmar. And I visited the bridge on the River Kwai from the famous war film. I love my time in Thailand. I want to go back and shoot a series of vlogs one day but it was just a quick trip and not one for filming and then from there i flew here to india so walking along here i'm passing the lalbar gardens which are a nice recluse from the city and the place i've been walking to is just down here and as i said it's a very famous place and I can't wait to try the South Indian breakfast that it is so well known for. I don't really know where I got the sickness or this virus from. It's not COVID, but it was just a lot of mucus and coughing, headaches, pressure around the eyes and around my nasal passage clogged ears but I'm pretty much 
by the recovery point now and I'm well enough to go out and shoot a video here today although my voice is a bit rougher than usual let's say Okay, so it turns out I walked past it. Mavali Tiffin Rooms is here. So let's grab a table upstairs. This is the vibe here. I just go up and take a seat. This has been serving locals since 1924, so it has a lot of history. Done your best. So I now sat down here and the atmosphere is authentic, historic, and I have dosa right here. So um, I think this one is like a coconut chutney, and this one is saba. And the thing that's special here is you pour this on the dosa like so. The next clip of me eating the dosa. Either I did not press record or it got deleted. The dosa was delicious, but let's move on to the coffee. And I am finishing that off, not with chai, but filter coffee. And you may be surprised, you might think that India is all about chai. Actually, uh, coffee has been made in Karnataka's hills and being served in Darshini's South Indian breakfast places like this for uh, served for decades and it's been growing for centuries. You'll find really good filter coffee everywhere and this particular place might be one of the best places to try it in all of the cities. Um, it's an interesting flavour because it's like an Americano but with milk. So it has a strong coffee taste, but it's very milky at the same time. So it's stronger than, say, a latte or a cappuccino in terms of the coffee flavor. Uh, very interesting. Very, very nice. Walking through the kitchen on my way out, you can see everybody preparing it. You'll notice that all the men working here are not wearing shoes. So coming out of there and back onto the sunny and busy streets of Bengaluru. And right now I'm going to take a auto rickshaw to a famous market in sort of what you can say is the older central part of Bengaluru. So I just need to uh, hail one down. Hi, uh, how much to Krishna Rajendra? Which place you want to go? Just to the market, Krishna Rajendra market. How much is 100 it? Rupees. 100 Okay. So I've just been dropped off here by Krishna Rajendra Market, although I don't see the market anywhere. I think I have to cross maybe the highway here. I think it's in this direction. And this is probably one of the most intense parts of 
Bengaluru. I don't want you to think the whole city is going to be like this area that I'm probably about to show you because even though I haven't seen it, from my experience, generally the older areas of the city are a bit more intense and a bit more hustling and bustling. So there are modern areas of Bengaluru too with business parks and various buildings, etc. It's okay, I'm going to the market. Thank you. Famous. <laughs> so I think I'll just continue this way, keep going. Find a way to cross the road here. Wow, it's so alive. Lots of people and things happening here. I'm guessing this must be the street towards where the main market is. I'm told there is a beautiful flower market here as well, which is a highlight of this area. This must be it. It seems quite local. Bengaluru is not a touristy city really. It's more of a business city. So most people won't put it on their itinerary with Kerala and Goa and things like that. The real question is, which way to go? Do I head left here or straight? I'll ask somebody. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. Spices here. These chilies. So colorful. Hi. Hello, sir. Which way to the flower market? Oh, on this side. Okay. Go from there. Thank you. So while I walk through here and hunt down the flower market, I thought I would maybe talk a little bit about where I've been in India before. I said I've been twice, and this is my third visit. The last time was in 2019, four years ago, because it was in February or January. January, that was it. And it was for the Kumela. And I attended that, which is the world's largest religious festival in Prayagraj where the river Ganga, the Yamuna and the Saraswati meet and this holy meeting point is the place where many pilgrims come to take a dip. Millions and millions of people attend it across a month or two. I can't remember exactly how many days. Wow. Let's head inside here. And so I just visited Lucknow, Prayagraj and also Varanasi on that trip. It was just two weeks. The first time I was in India, I did a whole two month trip around the north, not the Himalayas. But I started in Delhi, went down to the temples of Kajuraho in Madhya Pradesh, then Agra, saw the Taj Mahal. By the way, beautiful flowers here. I can smell in the air. The sweetness of all of them, that is just so nice. After Agra, I made my way towards Varanasi. And then from there, train across to Rajasthan. I went to Jaipur, then Jodhpur, Udaipur, Jaisalma. I did a desert trip in Jaisalma and also Pushkar for a few days too. I can't remember what order I visited them all in, but I made videos in each one. They're still on my channel, you can find them. They're very old videos. And then after that, in Rajasthan, I made my way to Mumbai and flew out of there. If 
you want to escape the urban feeling of Bengaluru, then this would be a great market to come and get a feel of traditional India. And there's no two ways about it, this is absolutely not touristy at all. This is purely local right here. For the purposes of different religious ceremonies and things, I would imagine. But look at all the way these pretty combinations have been put together here. Just incredible. The color and the atmosphere here. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it almost looks like a auction of some kind. Very interesting. What's the name of this one? Sunflower. Sunflower. Okay. Keep this, keep this. Take it. Souvenir. <laughs> Very nice. And this man here, you are threading through the flowers to make a little, exactly, yeah. And then they hang them around portraits of Krishna or whoever. The flower market never seems to end either. You have all these individual places with their own men sitting down and making their bouquets or flowers. Fascinating just to wander and get lost in this incredible indoor market. So I'm now back outside the flower market and I'm going to show you a little bit more of the outer layers of the market, the other parts. Like here there's lots of fruit in a very colourful covered part of the bazaar. Pomegranates, pineapples and mangoes and apples, all kinds of fruits suitable for this climate. <laughs> Everybody has their umbrellas because it is so hot. That is an interesting piece of what looks like colonial era architecture right there. Maybe I will shortly escape after walking a little bit more through here to a different part of the city, show you a relaxing park and a different vibe away from this very bustling market area. I will try and find a rickshaw once more and hop over to somewhere else here in Bengaluru. It is also very hot. The sun is just beating down on me right now. And these very fit locals who are just carrying stuff on their heads somehow in the heat with huge loads Fresh sugar cane. 
All right, plenty of tuk-tuks here. Let's find the driver. Hello? A uh, Cub and Park? Cub and Park. Cub and Park. How yeah. much? 100 rupees. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. So I paid the driver 100 rupees to get to Cubbon Park here. If you're from the UK like me, it's easy to do the conversions at the moment between rupees and pound sterling because one pound sterling is basically almost 100 rupees, it's about 99. So you can, you know, times or divide everything by 100 to work out what the price is. Uh, for example, 100 rupees, one pound for that journey just there. And if something costs a thousand, then you know that's 10 pounds and so on and so forth. This is a historic park here in Bengaluru which was first established in 1870, so quite a long time ago now, and the perfect retreat from the noisy streets and busy markets as we've seen. I want to get your opinion on the new GoPro. This is the GoPro 11. I'm using a media mod for the first time, which is a kind of added mic. So I'm not using the GoPro microphone and I have a little windbreaker for it as well to help with the wind sound. GoPros are pretty terrible with the wind sound and the front mic is what I'm using at the moment. But the problem is, as you may have noticed in this video, when I turn the camera, I'm now speaking still into the front microphone, but maybe you can't hear my voice as well. It might be fine in this park, but I don't know how it was earlier in the louder environments like the market. So let me know if it's too quiet. Do I need to put subtitles? Or is it manageable for future videos? I'm preferring to make this style of video uh, now because in India, I can just pop out the GoPro and start filming and I can be a bit more inconspicuous and not have a pile of camera equipment in areas where I don't want to draw an intense amount of attention to myself. So let me know what you think in the comments below. There is the option to I think change the microphone to the back microphone but the problem is then when I'm speaking to the front of the camera like this it will be the same effect but just in reverse to what I currently have and so I don't think that makes much of a difference I think it's probably better to have the front microphone on as opposed to the back or I could buy a new microphone which you can plug in and I don't think that has the limitation of only choosing the front or the back you can speak into any side of it maybe that's the solution if you guys think that it's not clear enough when i speak from the back in these walking shots out of the park and i am just walking through a few of the streets here nearby which are totally different to what i showed earlier in the market bengaluru has lots of shopping centers and cool coffee shops a thriving drinking and dining scene you can see Starbucks across the way there it is quite developed with a great metro system which I don't have time to use I'm using my two feet to show you the city and 
a new airport that I arrived in, which is impressive by the way. So I'm gonna grab a drink somewhere that has been recommended to me and just give you a quick taste in these few shots here of what modern life is like in this city of over 10 million people. So it's obviously now much later, as you can see it's dark, and I have taken a trip over to Bangalore's Food Street, which I've heard is supposed to be an interesting place to come at night time. I think usually these places are open, but people are just making do with pop-up stores. Okay, so here I have Pav Bhaji, one of my favorite street foods. I've tried it before in Mumbai. It's like a curry sauce and this buttered bun here. Generally, you pull apart the bun and you pour the curry sauce inside, but I don't really know how I'm gonna get away with it here with no tissues or hand sanitizer, but I'm gonna try my best. So open up the bun and pour a bit of uh, some curry on there. Beautiful. I just love this so much that when I saw it, I thought I have to try this on the street here in Bangalore. Let's tear apart the bun. Have a bite. Mm. Just how I remember it. Like a rich, kind of meaty flavor, although I don't think there's meat inside. A rich kind of tomato-based curry with uh, coriander on the top there. The trick when it comes to street food is to follow the crowds. What is everybody having? Which places are popular? You know that they're good. And this one seems very popular. Okay, I propped up my GoPro again. It's slightly to the side, but who cares? Things are about to get a lot more messy. I've got Idli here with two different sauces. They've kind of combined with each other a bit. One of them's the coconut one. This is also something you can eat for breakfast. It's a very popular South Indian thing, but also as a snack. So here we go. Mm. Delicious. After having the Pav Bhaji, I was looking for somewhere to wash my hands. And then a boy who passed me said, come up to my room, I'm on the fourth floor. So I followed him all the way up. I didn't film it because I didn't want to film his house, of course. And I washed my hands in his bathroom <laughs> and then came back down. All right, so I'm going to end this Bengaluru video here. I know I didn't show all of the city. I just gave you a taste of it and brought you up to date on my travels. I'm gonna be in India for the next month, traveling around, uh, visiting places in the South that I've never been to. So tomorrow I'm taking the train two and a half hours to Mysuru, formerly known as Mysore, and it has the second most visited site after the Taj Mahal, believe it or not. So a lot to look forward to and I'll see you then. Thanks.